pleasure to welcome Temple Brandon to our centre here today and to our Bishop Alton Greenhouse School. It is such an enormous privilege. We've had so many people coming here. We've had half stars, we've had politicians, but I don't think we've ever had such a great representative of Brandon. So it's an enormous privilege to be here. And it's part of our strategy to actually have lots of people coming. Um, because we want to give them the opportunity to see this work, but also to learn from them. We've already learned so much today about all of the issues that she's written about and talked about. But the most important thing we learn, I think, from Temple, she reminds us, is that we have so much more to learn and we have to remain curious, we have to remain uh, committed to learning about autism and supporting people with autism. We also have to remain committed to always listening to people who have autism who can tell us more than anybody else about these issues. Um, so I'm going to actually speak very little and actually hand over to Temple to speak and then we're going to have some questions and answers. <coughs> well it's great to be here and I think I'll start out and just tell a little bit about myself. When I was two and a half years old, I had all the full-blown symptoms of autism, no language, no eye contact, I uh, constantly sit and rock, and I got really good early intervention. By the time I was two and a half years old, I was in really good speech therapy, did a lot of ABA type of stuff with me, and another thing that was done was a lots of turn-taking games. You gotta teach these kids how to take turns, and that was done with board games with me. Now, when people talked really fast, I didn't understand what they said because I had problems with hearing hard, constant sounds. So my speech teacher would slow down and she'd say, like, cup. And she'd enunciate those hard consonants. Another thing that's often neglected in autism is sensory problems, like loud sounds like a school bell. That hurt my ears like a dentist room. There's other children that are visually sensitive. They can't tolerate fluorescent lights. Now, they were not a problem for me. Sensory issues are extremely, extremely variable. And there's one area where I'd really like to see research done, and that's on the treatment of sensory issues. Because they can make it just impossible to tolerate normal environments. You know, like going on a tube or a football game or a restaurant with a lot of TVs going on at once. We need to be definitely uh, working on sensory. And it's difficult to research because it's variable. Now, one kid's got visual sensitivity problems with fluorescent lights, another one doesn't. Now, on the higher end of the spectrum, there's kind of different kinds of minds. I'm a photorealistic visual thinker. And the HBO movie shows exactly how my mind works. And uh, you can play the American DVD here. You can buy it on Amazon in the US. But you'll have to set a computer for region one. And then it will play. And if you don't have to do that, get the I saw a store downtown that unlocks cell phones, or mobile phones, they can, they can certainly show you how to do that. And then the US DVD will play. Um, they did a great job at the movie. They showed the sensory stuff they, accurately. They showed all the projects that I built um, accurately. Um, and also anxiety in a real accurate manner. And I'm a photorealistic visual thinker. And all the images in the movie flashed up as a series of images. Couldn't do algebra at all. And I'm finding a lot of kids that can't do algebra, but they can do geometry and trick. Then there's another kind of mind. This is the pattern thinker. These are your engineers and mathematicians. You know, think chess, origami. These kids often have trouble with reading. And then you've got the kid that's the word thinker, where uh, they know all the facts about their favorite whatever, they like to major in history, and they're definitely not a visual thinker. Now, I think one of the things at home that I've really been pushing is working on learning job skills. And I was very pleased when I visited the school. We went in and the uh, students were making brownies, and they were making brownies from scratch, and they're really, really yummy too. Uh, <laughs> and doing a real task in a real kitchen with real food, because that's the only way that they're going to learn how to do things in life. And when I was 13 years old, my mother had me do a little sewing job for a seamstress. And when I was 15, I took care of nine horses. We need to be thinking a lot more about what is the person going to do when they grow up? You know, some of the individuals that go to college, they need to be getting work skills. 
Uh, I think just a little bit that I've seen here in, in the UK, I think you're doing a little better job on the work skills stuff. We need to be thinking, kids are like 12 and 13 years old, what can they do when they grow up? Now my mother always encouraged my art skill, and that showed up around, you know, eight years old. And my art skill is what I used in my design business. You gotta develop strengths. We gotta build up areas of strengths. I think what I'll do now is I think it'd be a good idea just to do a whole bunch of questions. I'm gonna sit down so my back's kind of bothering me. And just sit down and do a whole lot of questions. If nobody has a question, I'm gonna pick some. <laughs> so I'm have a question. Well, I'm gonna have to pick somebody. Okay. No, they did a great job with that, and the DVD's got a really nice commentary track, and it also has subtitles in French and Spanish. <laughs> Which would be useful to some people. Yeah, and I talk a lot about autism on the commentary track, and I, the movie is clinically accurate. That was one of the things we were very careful about, because Emily Gerson Sings, the producer, is the mother of an autistic child, and she runs an acting agent, an agency in New York. She wanted that to be right. Well, I spent half a day with Claire Danes, and and they videotaped that, and then I gave her all the oldest VHS tapes I could find, so that she could uh, get ahead of ten hours of my audio and you know my mannerisms. And then I spent a lot of time with Emily Gerson Sainz and with Mick Jackson, the director. It took a while to get the whole thing together because you had to get the right team of people. And, that, and it took 10 years to get the movie put together because it took that long to find the right team. Mick Jackson, Emily Gerson Sainz, and then uh, uh, then Christopher Munger, the writer. You know, you've got to um, have the right people that understand how to deal with the story. Mick is an extreme visual thinker. And I just loved how they did all the visuals on that. That really turned me on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pick something. Okay, right there. Hello. Yeah? Um, when you talked about some of the different types of learners that Yes. We, my child is quite severely autistic, so I don't really know what category he would fit into in something like that. Um, in that Basically, they tend to be visual learners or they tend to be auditory learners. If a child has a lot of problems with the visual system, that's a nice thing to But if a child has a lot of um, problems with, with the visual system, the ones that don't like the fluorescent lights and those sort of things, they tend to be an auditory learner, where hearing will be their best sense. And then there's other kids where vision is going to be their best sense for learning things. It is very Hello. Um, you mentioned earlier about the, um, the sounds that could be too loud. Yes. Could you give more of an explanation on that and how you dealt with it? Well, the school bell went off. It was like a dentist girl hitting a nerve. That was yes. just terrible. Uh, one of the ways to, to help with these sounds is to let the child initiate the sound. The sound is better tolerated if the child turns on. Okay, fire the, uh, the smoke alarm. That is one of the big battles. One of the ways that you could reduce that would be to get a smoke alarm and wrap it all up in towels so that muffles it, and then let the child turn it on briefly. And then gradually he takes the towels off. Where he's got control. Another big problem with sound sensitivity is the supermarket or a tube station or something like that. They just go into sensory overload. It's like a dentist girl hit the nerve, be like just a jackhammer, you know, right next to your head, you know, sort of thing. So you, you, you arrange a signal. So when he's had enough supermarket, so you can take him out before he has a tantrum. So you go in the supermarket, and when he's had enough, you can give a signal to come out. Also, you'll be better able to tolerate that noisy place when he's fresh and not tired. When he's tired, problems with all the senses Sensitivity stuff gets worse. I don't think it's Mike's even working. Can you hear me with that? Yeah, yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to use it fading in and out. That's right.